come to work fat. I don't come to work and go to eat. Actually, I'm not sure. When I had a civilian job, bitch, I used to come to work at three o'clock and I would order food when I got to work and then be eating in this in the little side office. And then somebody come in, I'm like, they're like, hello. Um, one second, please. Money is commenting on a comment we had off camera, which is that I ordered my food and then it's gonna get here while we're podcasting, and I don't want to eat it cold, so I'm asking that we take a break so I can eat my food when it does arrive. Go ahead and eat your little food. Go ahead and eat your little food. But you also do not always come to work fed. You've eaten on the podcast several times. There's a whole when whole thing about it. I will not be discussing when, where, why, or how. Uh uh-uh. uh. You see all the little podcast called the one where Monet won't stop eating. Monet knows we're not gonna. That was literally that was like Jacob. First of all, you wasn't even producing the podcast. You wasn't even helping produce the podcast back then. You were just Bob's Bob's piece back then. So what you talk about, Jacob? We don't have to uh, talk about what we're. What are you you Um, behind? Look at all the concentrate at the bottom of my juice. I know that that's what all juice is, but I just I need to like shake. That's not what all juice is. Most juices, if you buy a juice at the store, most juices have preservatives and natural fruit and real. Ooh, we need to do an episode about, ooh, ooh. <laughs> we need to do an episode about a weasel words. Hold on one second. Let me try to shake it up. What is a weasel word? Let's see, look at her. Weasel words are things that companies put on products and the all government- natural. Yeah, all natural, virtually. Um, you, can, you can say 99.9% it kills 99.9% of bacteria because you're not saying all because you, you, you literally cannot say 100%. But there's no there's no one measuring how many percentage of germs you're killing. You know what I mean? Um, so companies slap these these markers onto products and we're like, oh, yeah, this is organic. Oh, bitch, I, got, I went to a whole deep dive on how the organic food industry, bitch, half that shit is not organic. I mean- Let me start on so, organic. The girl, like by some technicalities, they meet the organic metric, but it is not what we think or is what it means organic. To be honest, I don't. I'm not into like. I I don't feel like I need to eat organic. Like I feel like. I feel like a banana, that may have been grown with a few pesticides, is probably fine to eat, and I feel like I've been eating them like my entire life. The short answer is you're right. Like eating a, an eating an organic eating an eating oh my God, eating an organic banana eating, eating an organic banana ow eating an organic eating banana ow eating an organic eating an organic eating an organic banana, banana. Eating, <laughs> eating a non organic banana it does have pesticides but you eat so many other things that that's, that don't have that aren't organic and have pesticides that you don't die so you're not going to pass out or die or die early. <laughs> I'm sure there's some like, type of science that the same way about doesn't tap water in most places. Like most places, I'm like, just give me the tap water. I drink so much tap water. I don't know you're gonna say taste. We 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 cannot discuss water anymore. We've discussed tap we water at nauseum. We have we have a whole podcast about water, but we've talked about tap water. Me drinking tap water and you drinking and how you prefer with a with a shit ton of ice, which is weird to me because you're like. You you're insisting on drinking this distilled or filtered water, but then you filter it. You drink it with ice that is not filtered. But also, when you go to when you go to restaurants, you just get a glass of water. That they they, they, they not there's no filter at the at the fucking. Uh, I don't drink. I always I always order wine. sparkling water. If I go to a but do you want spark? Do you want sparkling or flat? I always say sparkling because I know it comes out of the okay. bottle. I have to learn to let, I have to learn to let it go over time. But when you say always, you don't mean always. And that okay, crazy. right? It okay, but crazy. Okay, because also I y'all don't use this. that word like that. Bob will, but Bob act like we don't speak hyperbolic in this podcast. On yes, when I say always, I don't mean every single time. But I more, speak hyperbolically, oft, but not about. Oftentimes, but there, that's one word I don't really use. I say I'll say like practically always or something like that. But you'll be like, oh, it's practically like, always, but not it, always because that's not the same thing. That's 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 saying ninety nine point nine percent. Right. <laughs> that is like our famous argument about you saying you only eat organic. That drove me crazy. I, oh I that drove me crazy. And today you don't know who weren't around for that one a long time ago. Monet came to my apartment and it was one about veganism. And Monet said that she only the way the conversation started was Monet said she only eats organic. And by the time <laughs> it was done, Monet was like, "What I'm saying is, when I go to the West Side Market, I get an organic salad." Well, so we, because y'all know, because Bob and I got it into being like I only eat organic. 
Because when I started at Bob and I getting in the only semantic argument about what or okay, I mean I think that no, one, it was you like said a, you you said you only eat organic, but you came in eating like lifesaver gummies that day, and you were like I only eat organic. That is crazy. But Bob, we also we you and I would dine at fast food. We'd have you would have Domino's pizza and stuff. So yes, we know when I say only eat organic, we know that I did not. That's why only, I didn't know what you meant when you <laughs> said God. that because because I think if you mostly ate organic, but you don't even mostly eat organic. That's that's why I was That's so not con- true. At that point, the things in my home <laughs> were like all my fruits, Monet, all my stop. veggies. Monet, stop. Oh, I'm not no. going to do this with you. All my fruits, Do you mostly eat organic now? Do you mostly eat organic now? Yes. When it's not oh. like a restaurant or something. We have to, we have to move <laughs> on because you literally is, – is your little your little tuna from St. Lucia that, is that organic? Actually, I think it is organic, Sebo. It's not. Tuna fish. How, about, how about your popcorn? Is, is your popcorn is organic? I don't think popcorn can be organic. Popcorners. I mean, you, look, you know, your popcorners. Are your popcorners organic? <laughs> Answer the question quickly. I think they have organic popcorners, y'all. Oh, okay. How about your little, your little, um, your little Trulies and your little, uh, uh organic. Waterloos? Organic. Is, how, how, that's not organic. Show me where it says organic on the bottle. Bitch, maracuya, organic. See, that means you're, organic. You're currently <laughs> drinking nothing. This is what drives me crazy because when you say only, but it's not even, it's not even fifty percent. So how do, how are you bold enough to say I only eat organic? That's why I thought I was. I was like, this bitch does not only eat organic. You eat organic from time to time. That's also a thing about like when, like when you, if you have a vegan meal, and someone's like, are you vegan? It's like, no, I'm just eating a vegan meal. Like this meal is vegan. Why are you Everyone, saying meal like that, bitch? Are you are, are you a, a fucking milner? I say meal. How you say meal? No, you just said that. That's like when someone says, uh, "When I eat an, when I eat a vegan meal, bitch, a meal, a no, meal." Said, oh my God, a vegan meal, a vegan meal, a ve- <laughs> vegan meal. Now I don't even know what I'm saying. A vegan meal. Why well, don't say meal? A vegan meal. A meal. I'm, I'm ordering meals for everyone. <laughs> a meal. A milli, a milli, a milli, a milli, a milli, a milli. You know how I say, uh, how I use say the thing you write with. A pen, because you you say pen, a pen. It is a pen. It's you a pen. The, it's a ballpoint pen. It's an e vowel. The e is an e vowel. Pen. Don't don't don't. <laughs> oh my god! What? Don't use words like a eh and diphthong and ooh, it, it. We get it. <laughs> That's what the we e get, vowel it's, is. It's got a. It's an open e vowel. Eh, don't eh. open and glottis and soft palate me. <laughs> Do not. You are so mad at me existing. You are so mad at me existing. Oh my goodness. I've never like, seen you like this. <laughs> this is you, Monet. You are all okay. This is all crazy because you are always laughing at my existence. I just be in my life exist. You be cackling at my entire existence. I be I'm having a hard time with technology. You just uh, <laughs> you don't know how to block all the time. I be wearing my little my little um my little what you call my little uh my my my, my cat toy. <laughs> and you always have some Bob. You're just so interesting and kooky and quirky, which are quir- quirky. I said quir- quirky wrong. Quir- yes, quirky. But uh, but you always laughing at my at you. I don't think I'm that kooky and qu- and quirky. I don't make for your faces at me, Bob. You have said this on the before in the podcast how Doug. you're Doug and everyone and when literally a resounding everyone's like this nigga is Skeeter. You no, are bitch, Skeeter. Nigga, Skeeter. Nigga, you're blue and you are running around doing shit. Bitch, you are Skeeter. If this, if this is Full House, you're six from next door. If this is six, Family Matters. Wrong, wrong, wrong show. No, that's you Full mean, House. No. Or is that Step uh, by Step? That's Step by Step. If this is Family Matters, you're Steve Urkel. Okay? Absolutely. If this, Bob, you're if this Steve is Urkel. Doug, who are you then? Who are I'm you Patty Mayonnaise. Doug? I'm Patty Mayonnaise. Where are you, Patty Man? You bitch, you're Roger. Is who? You, actually, I'm Roger. <laughs> yeah, bitch, you are. You are the combination of Roger and Skeeter. <laughs> Why well, gotta be? Also, Patty Mayonnaise was black, right? Oh, for sure. But they did back then. They had to make her uh, fluorescent beige. But bitch, she's black. So what's Skeeter? I think it was black too. But he was like a purple. Yeah, but but the same thing to say. What was what was a redhead? He was green, but I think he's still white, white coated. But Roger sure. was green. Roger is definitely white, but green colored. Yeah, I think Skeeter was black but blue colored. And Patty Mayonnaise is black. And you know you know who does the voice of Patty Mayonnaise? Uh, Cree Summers. Who is Cree Summers? 
She's done, Cree Summers has done the voice for so many characters that we love. A lot of the Rugrats characters, a lot of characters. No, it's not Cree Summers. It was, um, it was, uh, did you watch Orange is the New Black? Of course. It was Yoga Jones. Oh, really? Um, uh, the one that got, w- w- she wore the glasses? She was very skinny. And she, uh, just Google Yoga Jones. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna use my phone because this, this table at this hotel is so, Topsy Hervey. Bitch, I was breathe hard and this shit is rocking all over. But it is wild to me that Yoga Jones was Patty Mayonnaise. Yoga Jones. People be out here living multiple lives, girl. Multiple. Like, like some folks don't know that Kathy and Jimmy. Oh, that's really? Yeah, isn't that wild? Some people don't know that Kathy and Jimmy is Peggy from King of the Hill. Kathy and Jimmy is like the thick, the thick sister from Hocus Pocus and also the thick nun from Sister Act. She's actually quite slim these days. I actually lost a lot of weight. I have never seen King of the... I was not a King of the Hill fan. That was not something we watched oh, in my household. Oh, it's a good show. You don't know, so you don't know who Boomhauer is? No. Boomhauer doesn't... So if someone says, this motherfucker talk like Boomhauer. That means nothing to you? Nothing. Not anything. Boomhauer was a character who was unintelligible. So he'd be like, ma'am, tell me one thing. I don't know if you're coming over around here. Everyone tell me one thing. I know for sure. That's how Boomhauer would talk. And so whenever someone's really country and they uh, have like a really thick accent where like northerners can't understand them, um, they're called Boomhauer. Country, 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 cut, 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 country, 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 country. Like all the Southern Queens, y'all need to do like a country number and then they all just go, country, country. Okay, I don't identify as a Southern Queen. I'm a Southern person, but I'm a New York City Queen. I know, because my 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 queen my dragness has is there's no southernness whatsoever in my drag. I don't think. If you start a drag in this, if you start a drag in Atlanta and you like stay down there, do you think that you would become a pageant queen? Do you think that that's something? Do you think that's something that you would have went into? I probably would have gone into it. I did a few pageants even in New York City, so I probably would. There, there's probably a lot more available in the South, so I probably would have mm-hmm. done more. I'm really interested to see how my drag would have been shaped. Where right, I, you'd be so different, Bob. If you oh were a Southern, God. you'd be so. I was just, that was gonna be my next question. I posed. I'm like, imagine how different your drag would be if you did not start in New York. You'd be a completely different queen. But but you're still again, funny, so you would have still found your way back to comedy. I feel right. Yeah, like people like Violet Chosky. Violet's from Atlanta, but she does not. But Violet's not. She doesn't. She doesn't read as Southern, even though she's from Atlanta. Yeah, I would say that too. She doesn't read as a Southern queen. And 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 but, but Violet actually did drag in Atlanta, but just didn't read as Southern. And I am from Atlanta, but I we're from Georgia, but I don't. Well, I don't know if you know this. I was actually born in Columbus. We can't. I was born in Columbus, and then I moved to <laughs> Lagrange, and I moved to. Um, <laughs> But if you grew up in, if you started in drag in Chicago, you'd probably have the same, a similar trajectory to what you have now. I feel. You think so? I feel Chicago, Chicago New York drag pretty has parallel. A, Chicago drag has like a, I don't think, I think Chicago drag has like a very specific thing about it. Like when I think of Chicago drag, I think of that kimchi, Shea Coulee, Bambi Banks, uh, Lucy Stool, um, even Aura Mayori. Like I, like I see her and I'm like, yeah, you, you scream Chicago. You belt Chicago. Ah, all right. She's a queen that could. You could. If she told me she was from South Dakota. Like I would see that. But I will. But again. But our, But then, if if you would start a drag in Chicago, it would be like no, yeah. Like Chicago queens are like Bob the drag queen, kimchi. She, you know what I mean? Like you would have I mean, been in Trinity that. Trinity is definitely from Florida. I mean, I know she's from Alabama, but Trinity is like a Florida drag queen for sure. She's from. Yeah, I see that. She's from Alabama, though, right? Yeah, she's from Alabama. Yeah. Alabama is such an interesting place. You ever been to Alabama? But uh, uh, a couple times, two once for comedy and once for B Bob's in Mobile, Alabama, oh, aka the sweatiest, hottest bar in America. No, I'm gonna give that to uh, Scarlet Honolulu. Oh, this is true, Scarlet. Scar- okay, so okay, so Scarlet is this bar in Honolulu. um in, in in Honolulu that a lot of the girls have have worked at. It's a great club. I did not find it to be that hot, but every other every other queen was like, girl. Be prepared. It is, and it was hot. It was so hot. The stage was wet. And y'all know me. I am a sweaty queen. But for some reason, when Patty and I went, actually, I went by myself. Patty wasn't there. Why didn't Patty go with me? Anyway, um, I would. I did not find it to be that hot. But they had also changed something. They had like two ACs in the dressing room at that point. It just wasn't. But the funny thing about hot. the ACs in the dressing room, they're not connected to the. At least when I went there, the the AC wasn't attached to the outside. 
the AC was attached. The, the outside of the AC was inside the club. So the dressing room was cold. In fact, I'll tell you more about it after this break. <laughs> if I recall correctly, the AC is attached to the dressing room, but the butt of the AC wasn't outside. It was inside. Isn't that wild? <laughs> Excuse me. Well, I think when I went, they had one of those, you know, those rolling units that kind of has a little exhaust nozzle thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they had when I went. So I think they changed. They switched it around. But also, if you, if anyone was going to lose listening, carpet the stage. I would rather have carpet than be up in that bitch, slipping and sliding. I know that was. I bitch, it was slippery. But also, imagine how you might have a carpet on stage. That shit would be nasty. I performed on stage with the carpets before. There is one club that has a carpet on stage. That oh. There is there is someone that has that. And I remember being like, this is strange. Maybe it was a club. Maybe it was a theater. And I was like, this I, is I'm weird. looking for a queen. Do you remember Watermelon? No. Watermelon was this queen from Honolulu um, who would perform whenever you were there. I don't know if she's what she's up to these days. Yeah, water, you don't remember Watermelon? <laughs> no, I don't know her. Well, big shout out to Watermelon, who is uh, apparently hosting. Um, oh no, she's not hosting a review party. This she just made her own drag race. Um, never mind. Oh my god, I've been I was tr- I've been tricked by that so many times this season. You know, especially when the girls just came out, I knew it was so many girls. I was like a post. I'm like, oh, I don't remember her from the promo. I was like, like three people have gotten. Not that these girls are trying to get anybody. They're trying to like make a cute picture. I was like, oh, bitch, I fully thought this was a queen on the show. It used to be Watermelon and this other queen. They were called, like, the Fruity Queens. They both had, like, fruit names. It was, like, Watermelon and this other girl named, like, they were called the Juicy Queens or the Fruity Queens. Or Juicy something. Queen sounds familiar. Or maybe that is just a queen. Juice Box Queen? Is that a queen? Juice Box Girl? There's a queen named Juice Box. Ju- what's up with some of these names? <laughs> All the girls with food names. There's sugar, spice, spice. <laughs> cocoa, milk, juice. Uh, watermelon, watermelon. Um, like, like you wanted to be uh, cornbread, th- cornbread. You wanted to be mistake, ginger, ginger, lemon, lemon, lemon. ginger, um, peppermint. <laughs> Y'all hoes hungry. <laughs> <laughs> also, that is a very southern hungry southerners will hungry you good or go you're bob what is going on you feeling real you're feeling very country today i say Y'all hungry hungry <laughs> okay i've said hungry since you've known me I know. i've never said a hungry or you but guys you had hungry? a very you had a, you had, a, you had more of a bite this time yeah y'all hoes hungry now don't come back now you hear how do you say hungry <laughs> hungry bitch, bitch i am hungry Girl, i am hungry <laughs> <laughs> hungry that's a queen, that's a queen. That's a queen. Hung- oh wait isn't there like a hun- is she hungry is she hungry yeah oh my god hungry eats all hungry eats all the other queens how do you feel about that you were gonna you be mistake that- i was gonna be mistake and then i decided not to go with honestly, it i was like i'm not changing my name honestly that would have been iconic <laughs> mistake oh yeah mistake <laughs> um do you remember there was hungry is she hungry had a had a drama because she posted a, a, a Jacob. If you can, Jacob, look it up or chime in. She had posted to look. Someone like did her because she has a pretty iconic makeup, right? Hungry's makeup yeah. is very signature to her. It was, and so uh, it was Crystal Versace when she came back Chris, to give up the crown on uh, Drag Race UK four. Yeah, when Crystal Versace came back to give up the crown on UK four, she had a similar paint to what Is She Hungry does, and Is She Hungry like did a tweet about it and like basically saying that people don't credit her, and then ISIS ended up doing something similar too, and it's like. Yes, queens are inspired, but like, so just because I did a makeup that's similar to yours, do I do I have to post like this is the inspiration? Like, people get makeup is gets passed around and is inspired a lot. I don't think that you are indebted to tag and be like, I got this idea from Hunger. Maybe Crystal didn't probably didn't even she saw it somewhere else. Who knows? I mean, imagine um, all the queens who have to tag fucking Trixie, Kim Chi and Trixie, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. girl, Kim. The girls who look right now, Trixie really done changed the game in drag makeup. I'm not saying Trixie's the first one that did it, but I do think a lot of these baby queens in these towns are all in, not all, but a lot of them are very inspired by every every bar you go to. 
there is a fucking Trixie Mattel there. And I'm not even kidding around. What I would say is people like Im- like imitating Trixie as opposed to like people like doing makeup that's their own. I don't see I don't see a lot of people like, oh, I'm starting drag this in my face. Like when I see Trixie faces, think, people I, like trying to emulate or like literally copy her thing to make I think a, as a bit. Has had, I think Trixie has had an impact on drag makeup as a whole. I mean, I, I don't think she's the only one who's had that. I think that a lot of queens have had impact on dr- drag makeup as a whole. But something about Trixie's stamp, that mm-hmm. that that kooky eye she does, um, yeah. I think has certainly. And, and I'm not saying Trixie invented any of it, but I do think Trixie invented some of it. Um, I think that she's had she her makeup has been very impactful on where drag makeup is today. I feel I would say that. Like um, who else is like that? Like Raven. Raven is someone who has been incredibly bitch. impactful in terms of like the way people do their faces. There's like a thousand Ravens out there. Bitch. I mean, you look at someone like Christopher Versace. Christopher Versace's face is literally Raven's face. Like you can tell she saw Raven. Well, except she was when it was Hungry's face. No, I'm <laughs> and you don't see Raven being like, no one was doing the this, the exclamation point. That is Raven. People were not doing that. Like people That's literally, so Raven. literally. I mean, she she has a show painted by Raven, right? So, I mean, you know, you know this. Raven is no. It's I painted love with Raven. Raven. Painted by because it's, you're thinking painted by fame. The show's called oh, Painted, yeah. and Raven's the host. But Raven doesn't paint true. anyone. It's a this it's is a true. Show. Bitch, do you know who, do you know who's who was a guest judge on her show? Who fame? Mother RuPaul. Oh, work. Yeah, she's a. She, I think she's the final boss. RuPaul is the final. Uh, the final judge every episode, every, every oh, for the finals every RuPaul season. RuPaul loves Raven. Oh, I mean, two, two queens RuPaul <laughs> loves is Raven and Got Mick. Ru- RuPaul loves these two queens, and he loves Seattle. You think so? Oh, no, I'm just, I'm just being funny because I think he was like, oh, um, Seattle, you, uh, Seattle, you, uh, Seattle. <laughs> um, I mean, but it ma- Jay, uh, Jay, um, what's your name? Bob. Oh my God, it's not like my mom. Jesus Christ. Um, imagine the um the hours RuPaul and Raven has spent together. I think RuPaul once said in an interview, it takes him like four hours to get ready and just painting. He likes to stop and like listen to music. Raven and Ru have spent so many hours together with Ru with Raven and Ru's face like. You had someone do your makeup. Uh, Layla did your makeup one time, right? Yeah, Layla. I, I did. Um, Ross was in Chicago, and Layla sent me a, a text. She's like, "Hey, girl, you gonna be in Chicago this weekend, right?" I was like, "Yeah." She's like, "Do you want me? To, do you want me to paint you?" I was like, "Oh my god, I would love that." I've never had anyone paint my face before, and um, it was fun. I think Layla did a beautiful. We're gonna we're gonna put a screenshot. We're gonna send this to Jake Jacob so Jacob can give it to Jay. This, you're looking at the screenshot of, of how of how Layla painted me, and I think she did a she did a great job. Maybe I felt if we didn't beautiful. Make such a big deal about the pictures being on the screen, it wouldn't be such a thing. Like we we are sometimes making we're like, and we promise we we are send, I'm sending it right now to Jacob. Jacob will send it to Jay. Jay will, and if we didn't do that every time, I don't think it'd be such a big deal when it wasn't on the screen. But even we though, got there, Bob. Though, we got there because that's how we got there. here. <laughs> That's how we got here because we would say, "Yeah, we, we, we're gonna put it on the screen." I'm gonna go for that, and then people were like, "What? <laughs> we got here by doing that?" <laughs> so yeah, I really I enjoyed it. Um, I think it does feel good to just show up and sit back and have someone just do your face. And I can imagine at this point, Rue just shows up, head in the back of the chair. He kind of sleeps a little bit because uh, I, I don't know. I, Rue gets there like pretty early. Like Rue, because of, of how old she is. You think because of how old she is, she sleeps? No, but <laughs> I was about to sleep wow. when when <laughs> when Layla's in my when Layla does your. Well, Bob can't sit still. Bob is Bob has ADD, so I'm sure. Oh, Layla, all, I, do, I do not. I, I have not been diagnosed with ADD. You 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 will not be. You're not a psychiatrist. You will not be diagnosing me on today. Anyways, Bob can't and, sit and still. And secondly, I do sit still. Layla does my makeup twice no, an episode on. When on I say here. when I say sit still, I don't mean like moving. I mean like Bob is always like, wait, let me listen to this, it's telling a story or like showing someone a thing. Like you're always doing that. So I'm sure you cannot. I can. I I I want to. I know for a fact you are not sitting there like this. I said pretty still while Layla did. Call her. Call her up. Jacob, send her a link, actually. I want because I don't want money to have one side of conference like she did with like she did with Mateo, where she wouldn't allow me to speak my voice. This, but this is a, a, this is a simple drop. I, I'm not gonna ask no, anything. We, we can have Layla McQueen can join the call. Don't <laughs> see you try you trying to control the narrative. We will send Layla a link. Don't you worry, Miss Honey Bunny. I have a piece of 
something stuck organic, in my tooth. Uh, some sort of organic food you had? It is. I had I had some organic. Um, what did you eat that was organic today? Today, this morning, I had um, uh, bacon, egg, and cheese. Organic. The the egg was absolutely was cage free. Organic. So full of sh- in in Brooklyn. I'm not in Brooklyn. I'm in Manhattan. Oh, so you saying? What? So you saying? So you saying because Brooklyn um, has a lot of black folks that they can have organic food in Brooklyn? That's what I said. I know Man- Manhattan bodegas don't be doing organic. If you go go to a Manhattan bodega and be like, let me get the organic egg, they'll be like, get your ass <laughs> out of here. See, because y'all non-New Yorkers, y'all don't know how to work the system, bitch. I've been here. I'm not new to this, bitch. I'm true to this. Okay, I know where to get the organic so, eggs so from. What you brought your own eggs? No, I know where I know Mo which jellies know, have organic Mo, eggs. They know at these bodegas, they'd be like, "Do you want the fucking?" It'd be the it'd be the white eggs. Everyone has the same eggs. But anyway, and so and what else you had was organic. The, was the was the was the bagel organic? I didn't have it on the bagel. What you have? I had it, on? it. I had it in a lettuce wrap. And was the lettuce organic? Yes. Was the bacon organic? The bacon? I, no, I didn't have bacon. I said, I said, um, you egg said and bacon, cheese. egg and cheese. Yes, you I, did. I like say because I'm so used to saying that, but I had the egg and cheese on it the was, lettuce. Was, I had the cheese or, was the cheese organic? It was cheese organic. You are so full of shit. <laughs> that little tub next to you. What is it? Show me the lid. Show me the this, lid. It better say organic. No, this is. <laughs> I feel like I'm a makeup artist. So this is my. What is um, that? This is my organic guacamole. <laughs> hey, this is it. You're just saying organic. <laughs> I know. Yes, you are. I am. I'm not gonna let you gaslight me and our <laughs> listeners into just sitting, believing that you sitting around uh, like in the garden over there growing your own fucking food. <laughs> Can I tell you? I had a really idea. I was in this hotel, and I was like, I think it'd be really cute when I get my house when everything is done. I want like a wallpaper with this black on black. Wouldn't that be cute? I literally just said that yesterday. I said, Jacob, let's get a black on black wallpaper like this. You did? When? Not when I was on the phone. Yes, you did. Because we were looking at you and I said, Jacob, we should get a black on black wallpaper like this. Wouldn't that be nice? And Jacob said, yeah, that would be nice. Oh, I didn't I didn't hear that. But you I... remember that, Jacob? No. Because Monet, you responded to Monet, you were like, oh, look. Jacob, did that ring a bell to you, Jacob? Jacob already yes, said uh, no. I do recall this conversation. Thank you. And, and, and Monet was there, right? I'm going to be fully honest. I don't remember if Monet was there or not. I guess she was because we were talking about the wallpaper. So I say exactly. she was there, right. But I didn't have my headphones in when you said that. You made because that right up. before that, Because right, right before that, you were talking about something about a pizza or something like that. And then I... Um, pizza? Then I, then I, yeah, you were talking about something with Jacob. Uh, then how did you know talking about pizza if your headphones weren't in? <laughs> I was doing a bit to like yeah, uh, incriminate yeah, yeah. myself. Um, okay, my, well, listen, y'all. My food is almost here, so we. we oh will be my up. God, you are ridiculous! I'm hungry. <laughs> I said, I said it your way, hungry. So no, you you're Bob. Me. You're Bob. You're not hungry. You should, <laughs> let this bitch live. Give her identity. And I said it your way, so you don't understand me. I'm hungry. <laughs> so you hoes will understand in these streets, honey. It's not going to take a whole commercial break. For Wait, when we get, get, we, we, we get back, maybe maybe Layla McQueen will be here. I ordered uh, I ordered um, wings from Wingstop, and I got lemon pepper and buffalo wings with ranch. There's a there's a Wingstop in in our area. Apparently, we don't live in the same area. When we live like twenty minutes apart. Bob always said this, and we timed it the other day. It took me nine minutes to get from my house to your house, but we see pretty much the same things. No. Text, yes. me your address, text me your address right now so I can Google Maps. We did quick. this on Google Maps. I'm not gonna oh tech, I'm, about to say, I'm not gonna say my address right now. Also well, actually I have your address on my phone. You want to say how you don't have my address? Well, I have it saved in under your contact. Honestly, y'all gotta start saving people's address under your contact. So you don't I have know. to keep asking them what's your address. Don't that you is so annoying. Hell, always what now what's your or you just search the word address in the chat. Yeah, I feel I always feel really bad. I'm like, and I always say, "Girl, sorry, uh, just give me your address one more time." <laughs> they be like, "Bitch, not the last time." Sorry, so sorry, 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 guys, sorry, sorry, I was ever born. Sorry, no, take me your address. It's not, I don't have it. Wow, <laughs> I know how to get to your house, and I know it takes uh, forty days by camel. <laughs> you are so ridiculous. That I know for sure, honey. Have you told everyone what you're doing? And um. Oh, my food's here. Oh, my God. Wait, we got to take a break, y'all. We'll, we'll be right back. <laughs> Monique, 
Thank you, Nobody Gunta. What's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? Do you check your credit score? Yeah, probably no. not. At Chime, that's exactly <laughs> what they do, honey. With a secure Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. The members see an increase of 30 points on average. All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. You know what? And right after I check all my social media, I'm going to open up Chime and get started. <laughs> so listen, start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up today. It only takes two minutes and it doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash rivalry. That's Chime.com slash rivalry. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank and A pursuant to a license from Visa USA Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to score may vary and some users' score may not improve. That's an out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply except at MoneyPass ATMs and a 7-Eleven or any All Point or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. So the other day, my friend had tried to cancel their subscription to Wild Presents Plus, right? And it took them, I'm, I, I'm not playing, like multiple different tries how to do it. And like, it should only take like one minute to sign up, but to cancel the subscription, it takes you 80 days. Like, that's not fair. That's not, that's not sickening, mama. 80% of people have subscription they forgot about. That's why I love using Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. Now, are you wasting money on subscriptions? 80% of people have subscription they forgot about. Maybe for you it's some unused uh, mailing service. Maybe it's some <laughs> other TV network you forgot all about. Listen, there's a great app. I use it. It helps me track all of my expenses and because of it i no longer waste money on subscriptions i don't even use you might have heard of it it's called rocket money formerly known as Truebill. the app shows all your subscriptions in one place and cancels what you don't want for you rocket money can even find subscriptions you didn't know were going on and you are paying all your contadas too you may even find out you've been double charged for a subscription to cancel a subscription all you have to do is press cancel that easy and rocket money takes care of the rest stop throwing your money away girl cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash rivalry that's rocketmoney.com slash rivalry rocketmoney.com slash rivalry can you feel my hole tonight It with its warm splendor. Oh, can't you feel oh, my home tonight? Oh, so can he stay in a key? So we just did a picture on his glutes. We just did a pretty exclusive. We just did a pretty exclusive where he was saying how, like, he's afraid that he's like hurting his voice and fully just screaming. Um, I want bitch, did we just do a Patreon exclusive and you said that you're trying to be <laughs> about your voice and you literally are screaming in your house? I was singing, not screaming. <laughs> okay, debatable. For starters. Um, Jake, can you please mute? Um, also, not to mention, um, there's something I want to talk about. I was saying I was so excited to talk about it too. And you distracted me. Oh, who needs, who needs Ginkgo Biloba now? Were you talking okay. about Lauren Allred? And, Je and then Je 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 Mona was about to say Jasmine Rice. I don't remember. I don't remember. Anyway, oh. we're back, everyone. Um. What? Uh, oh. So. Uh, ooh. Ooh. So <laughs> I finished up my dentist. I'm in the city. I, saw, I always do like my little New York City errand. I still go to my New York City dentist because I love them. She is a lesbian woman. She just had a kid. Anyway, I love my dentist. Better. So I left my dentist. I had to stop by the bank to do. Oh, so I, I stopped by the bank to get. Did she carry the kid? Her wife did. Got it. Yeah. So, so would you Dr. carry Harrison. the child if you could? If you and Andy were gonna have a baby, and you could carry the child. If it was like there's this new technology and, and you can carry a child, and one of you has to carry, who do you think would actually step up to the plate and carry the child between the two of you? 
Honestly, Andy had to do it because he's the one who's sedentary, but he's at home. Like uh, he is like in LA. Not I'm sedentary. traveling to God damn. <laughs> I said, God damn. She said, nigga, you are sit your ass down, don't move. You yeah, are Andy static. Had to carry the baby. No, you're not static. You are you are stagnant, honey. Cause most of the time Andy is Andy is at home. So <laughs> Andy's doing this thing for his work. They're doing this like biography about his company and cause and it's how it's like affected the sober community and like how the great work is doing, whatever. So they like do like a profile on him for one of the a part of it. So they came to like film at the house. To like film him at work, and Patty was like, "What? They're gonna film him sitting at the sitting at sitting at the desk, just typing on a computer?" And I was like, "No, they have other stuff." And he's like, well, "That's what a lot of his job is." So a lot of Andy's job is they staying home, home and dri- dri- driving the sober mobile. <laughs> him at like meetings and stuff like that, so he can be at home. I could not care. Do you think you could, if you and Jacob had to, who's carrying the baby? Okay, so between me and Jacob, I think Jacob would look cuter pregnant than I would. Bob, you look so cute pregnant. Imagine with your little Jacob pregnant. with your moomoos and your, your your little cat outfits and Bob walking around dragging his feet, <laughs> you'd be so cute. I feel like Ooh. Rachel, can you imagine how cranky he would be all the time if he was pregnant? <laughs> Girl, and also imagine Jacob. Imagine Jacob trying to carry Bob's nigga as a baby. This fucking baby would be busted. <laughs> Oh, this baby God. would rip Jacob apart. <laughs> you know, Jacob's sister's smaller than he is, and she's gonna probably have a baby. Jacob's mom is tiny. She had a baby. She had two. Yeah, look, she had two tiny babies. Um, Jacob's dad is tiny. Imagine your semen for connecting with Jacob's God. semen and, and making <laughs> this we big. Just, we, we we once did discuss the 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 I. The idea of Jacob's sister carrying our child, which would mean that she would end up carrying some of my um, large person <laughs> DNA, you know, and uh, that was a, a conversation we had at one point in time in our in our relationship was whether or not Ellie would carry a child for us. You know, Andy and I we're we're, we're similar in size, so so my semen would not ru- which my semen would be in Andy's house just with space, honey, to move around. We'd be like, oh my god, it's big in here. Well, I think you know, uteruses and wombs and vaginas are made to uh, to Mr. stretch. Show. Sometimes sometimes it, it it doesn't work, but often it does. But anyway, Jake, I feel like I feel like Jacob would just be a cute pregnant person, and um, but I. I I feel like I could. I feel like I. I would if I had to step up to the plate. I would be able to do it. You know. Yeah. Imagine you like. I mean, and what pregnant women do all the time. They travel and do all this stuff, and they work. You know, right? Pregnant, but oh my god! Imagine doing drag. Oh, you had to get all. Honestly, great for you. No more corsets for nine months. No corsets. You can just wear the. The, w- the Wendy Williams jumped out for nine months. Did I? <laughs> you said for nine months. No you, corsets. You, you would be, you could wear, if you would have, not that you can't do it right now, but you know, we like to be Snatcherella and drag. You can bitch wear all of the moo-moos, all the things that work. You could be like Bianca, just sneakers. She's had surgery, Monet. Oh, I <laughs> she felt so she bad. Oh. The, vintage, the footage of her like limping off at the end, I felt so bad. I was like, this is raggedy. No, then at the end, she walks off. Have you watched the whole pit stop yet? No, I haven't watched the whole thing yet. At the very end of the pit stop, she like walks away, but she's limping. I was like, oh my God. Well, you know, I thought about because I had this corn on my bring a toe on both feet, and I want to get it removed, but you can't walk. Well, for a little while, not for the rest of your life. Yeah, but for months. It's not. not like, is it months? Yes, it's months. Like foot surgery, you can't walk. Like you, ha- you can't wear heels or anything. I don't think corn is. I don't think getting a corn removed is that severe. I think so. Is it? Hmm. Corn surgery, what the corn? corn. Well, there. Well, if you, I looked this up too. There's different variants in the corn. They, like, they're the ones you can put patches on. I think mine needs to be surgically removed. It typically takes six months to three, six weeks to three months to fully recover from corn removal surgery. The recovery yeah. time truly depends on the extent of the surgery. But does that mean you can't walk though? Can I walk after corn surgery? Patients will have to wear posture, posture. Post operative, there it is. P- patients have to wear a post operative shoe, a surgical boot for a week or two after surgery. A failure to wear the boot when walking could lead to swelling, he- healing delays, and other complications. Patients should avoid wearing regular shoes and walking barefoot for three to four weeks. You can walk. 
Yeah, that's about, imagine having to do my gigs with some with some damn sneakers on. Uh uh-uh. uh. Well, when I broke my toe, I had to do my shoe my show in Scooties. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I had to wear scooties, girl. <laughs> girl, bobbing them damn scooties. Okay, wait. So back to organic food. So when you have, if slash when you have children, are you going to feed your kids all organic stuff? I don't think I will. Is that horrible? Well, it's not horrible. When I think about kids who grew up not eating sugar, they be kind of like low-key miserable. Like who? I don't, I don't think I know any of those people. I know a few. My assistant grew up not eating sugar. <laughs> and you said Kenny is miserable? No, about the not eating sugar thing. Like, like when you hear about like the the I can't have sugar. Those kids, and I'm not saying miserable now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, Ezra didn't um, eat sugar as a kid. wasn't allowed to eat any sugar. Um, and I had like a few, like those kids. Like everyone's like having fun and eating like Oreos and like having eating all this fun stuff. And then like, and then you have this kid like Jacob wasn't allowed to play video games as a kid. He had to like play video games at his friend's house. And I don't want my kids like to not secretly. Be able to- I don't know. Ask Jacob. He's here. No, not like secretly. Oh, like, I okay. was allowed to play video games at a friend's house, but like I wasn't allowed to play video games in my own, in my own house. Like, like your mom is like, for Christmas, I, I ain't buying you no damn video game. I'm, I'm buying you yeah. this book. Read it. Got yeah. it. I, I would read books. And, and part of me is like, I think kids should be allowed to play video games at home. Now, granted, I played a lot of video games. I really was in these streets playing video games. But, but I, I also just happened to be someone who liked to read back then. I actually liked to read. So I like to explore. I like to read the encyclopedia. I like to read the dictionary <laughs> when I was a kid. I like to read plays. But I also love to play video games and play wrestling games and play, um, you know, Grand Theft Auto, if that was even out back then. I can't remember when I was playing Grand Theft Auto. Um, and play, um, you know, uh, GoldenEye and all that stuff. Oh my but, God, GoldenEye was such a, they need to re-release that, like redo well, it. Thing, Come on, Nintendo. Said, there, there, there's a thing you can pay like sixty bucks a year and play it on your um your uh Switch. Your Switch? Yeah, apparently. It, it's certain games, I believe so. Yeah, um, the Switch has a Nintendo sixty four emulator. It's like a year long subscription. You pay fifty dollars. It has a bunch of games, and I'm pretty sure GoldenEye is one of them. Is Star Fox on there, bitch? I will buy it tonight. Yeah, I will be Star Fox <laughs> is on it. I know. I, there, don't tell me that. There goes my fucking next couple of months. I can't. I need to work. Uh, you can work. N64 <laughs> online. Um, they have... Maybe they don't have GoldenEye. They have Jacob, Star Fox doesn't Jacob sound like a little hacker? <laughs> He's on like, have, Wade. Um, What's the sitch, Wade? Jacob be like... <laughs> okay, I'll look into it. They don't I, have GoldenEye, I'm sorry, but they do have Star Fox. Star Fox, I mean, GoldenEye is something we play with friends. Not necessarily something I would be doing by myself. Yeah, but you know. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah like, but, okay, but, so I, but I, was, I would want my kids, keep the key meat, baby, but I would, I would really want my kids to be able to eat candy and sugar and also like none or like have a McDonald's meal every once in a while and play video games at home. See, I know I how think, much joy it bought me as a kid. It brought me joy, but I think at what cost? Because my my mom, and I think you know, in the Caribbean too, people are not worried about like being skinny. Like they're like, but they want you to eat. They want you to eat, 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 eat. And my mom was the queen of. She, she, I would go to the grocery store on weekends and buy me all the things I wanted: the Dunkaroos, the Oreos, the Pringles, all the chips. Like she would do all that stuff, and she did not believe in denying me those things. And you know, I was, I was, I was a very heavy kid. I was fat, fat, fat. You know what I mean? So I think that, yes, I enjoyed all those things, and my mom would give it to me when I wanted it. But at what cost to my health? You know what I mean? And then also, I was also like with gaming stuff like that. But also, but the reason why I didn't like reading as a kid because it was corrective reading. My mom would I t- talk about this before. She would sit me down. I have to read because my stammering was so bad. Like I was like. Like that was like me, so she would sit me down and I would read out loud to in order, and it it did work, but it made me really resent reading. I was like, ugh, I cannot read. In college, when I had to read stuff in college for whatever, I used to, what a chore. So like, it's good and bad. I called my mom to talk the other day about raising children, and I was like, you know, mom, I feel like there's like a weird thing where like in my family sometimes, and I, I don't know, maybe it's in a lot of black families too. Where black families are sometimes, or at least my family, is really proud of spanking their children, like to an odd degree. Like they're very proud of the mm-hmm. fact that they spank their kids. Not just kind of like is and 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 the more severe the spanking, the more proud the parent will be. 
Mm -hmm. Even to the point where my mom would tell stories about spanking us, but my mom rarely, rarely ever spanked us. And and I and Jacobs has seen this where, where my mom would be like, "You got your ass beat too," and I'd be like, "I, I don't know that we really did." And then she'll be like, "Well, you all didn't get spanked." And then after we keep talking out, she'll be like, well, "I think I spanked you once and your brother twice." But when she tells stories, it sounds like she used to just whoop our asses every Wednesday, which is not true. My mom, my mom rarely ever laid her hands on us, like rarely, rarely ever. And my uncle, we were at home and my uncle said something and I was like, oh my God, like, I never even thought about this until like now. I'm like, he was talking about how he spanks other people's children. And I was like, if I drop my kids off at someone's house and they spank them, I don't care what my kids did. We are going to have a problem, a problem. But in certain circles, I mean, and you, this is y'all experience, you know this, but some people are like, it's like community building. So yes, it's, they're dropping up at your uncle's house, but your parents are always are also entrusting your uncle to like help raise these kids. If y'all want to do community activities, fucking do, play basketball, go cornhole. I don't want the com community activities, to, the group activity to be beating my kid's ass. Let's build community in another way without, without whooping <laughs> my kid's ass. Well, I, 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 but I mean, I don't think that's not my experience growing up. Like, I did get spankings and I did get beat, but it was never like I, I, I kind of think it might be more of an American thing. And I know we we've talked about a lot a lot about that in the past couple episodes of the, of the podcast. But it, because in my family or in like friends' families, I don't have a recollection of people being like, "Oh yeah, honey, you got you got your ass beat." Like it's not it's not a it's not a thing that we talk about often. But I I did get beat as a kid. I did, and bitch, at school there's corporal punishment. But it's so the thing that just made me weird was like how proud my my uncles and aunts are about hitting their kids. I'm like, why are y'all so mm -hmm. proud of this? Hitting someone who can't defend themselves. Yeah. Like yeah. it is it's so strange to me. And I, I after giving some thought, I don't think I would I don't think I would ever hit my kids. I don't I don't say I never like I definitely but I was never the go get a like you hear I heard these stories someone be like oh yeah I had to go get my switch from the from the tree I did yeah you never got your own switch we was it was not that type I used of to, beating. well I used to either get, go get my own switch or or when my my grandmother when my grandmother would spank me or there was this big big leather um belt like a big Le piece of oh. leather it was huge it was like thick. And it the, the point of this belt, the sole purpose of this belt was for spanking children. It had no other purpose. And um, there was it was to the point where the buckles were taken off of it on either end so she could hit from either end. Um, and, and it was hanging in the kitchen. And if you did a bad, if you did something bad, you had to go get the belt. And you would go, you would like be sobbing while you go grab this weapon so that my grandmother could hit us with it. Yeah, we didn't have. I didn't have that experience. My things are more like I did get beat with a belt a few times, and my thing was my mom would give me just like a slap. It was like a slap, like a quick like, stop it, but not that hard. More of like a stop it. And it was uh and yeah, I don't know. I, I was just thinking about that. I don't know how. Oh, we talking about raising kids and stuff. It was really mm -hmm. cute how you paid your grandma's car, and I saw that video. It was very cute. Oh yeah, my grandma did that for my grandma. I I, I love my grandma very much, and. You know, my grandma has done a lot for me, a lot in my life. And, you know, one day, one day when I do, when, when I have a memoir, I can talk about all those things. But she was very sweet. And we went out to go have um, dinner afterwards. And it was very sweet. I'm very Where happy to go with my grandmother. This place called The Simpson in Brooklyn. It's um, a West Indian restaurant um, right on Atlantic. We get it. You were on The Simpsons. This is out of control. <laughs> this is out of control. My grandmother is, so, and also, and again, this is another part aspect of like, I'm my grand. This is my grandmother who found because my grandmother used to share a bedroom when I first moved to New, to New York, and this you is your grandma's this, bedroom. Yeah, I so we slept in How the same bed. I was, I slept. My grandmother and I slept in the same bedroom from the time I was like, when I first moved here, so ten to like fourteen. I mean, that's not that I slept in the same bed. Fourteen, my mom fifteen. And I slept in the same bed with my mom until I bought her this house. Like, whenever I go back as an adult, whenever mm -hmm. I go back to visit my mom, I would sleep in her bed. But when you were kids, you and Justin shared a bedroom? Uh, up until a certain grade. Up until, like, a third grade. My third grade. And then we got our own rooms. Yeah. I, yeah but we didn't share a bed. We had, we had bunk beds. I was like, bitch, I, this was, like, prime, like, 10 to, like, 15. I was, in, I, was, I, was in like, I was in high school. Bitch, I was 35. <laughs> 
And so this sort of what she, she was my grandmother. So and I would get my friends was giving me was giving me porn, gay porn on DVDs and I was hiding it in my bottom drawer. And one day she was cleaning out my stuff because you know kids. I who know I probably was a mess. I probably had some shit, whatever. And she's going to do for my stuff, and she found this gay porn DVDs. And I was like, and I remember coming home. And she and she was like, she, I could you you you, know, you can tell your parents' energy is off when you when either the teacher called home or you didn't do something like you know the energy is off. So I'm like, hi grandma. She's like, hello. And then we're talking talking, and she goes, she takes them on. She's like, Kevin, what's that? I was like, what's what? And she had this this, this bitch. It was bitch. I was I had like five DVDs of gay porn, bitch. And I she's like, Kevin. She's like, Kevin, what is bust down boy? <laughs> Kevin, me want to know what is. Interracial facial <laughs> and what is run a train on that Twinkie boy? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. She's like, you don't know? She's like, they were in your drawer. I was like, oh, these are the DVDs I'm holding for my friend. Um, Bro, he don't you the, yeah, Monet is the worst <laughs> liar in the history. <laughs> Monet is the queen of uh huh. <laughs> Trying to think of a I lie. Like, I was like, I'm holding for my friend. This is his, but he didn't want to keep them at his house. So I said, I'll hold them for him. And then I don't remember what I don't remember what I should ask her about that. I don't she was like, what "Let's I, watch them then. <laughs> Let's see what's on your friend's DVDs, Kevin." <laughs> so you don't mind if we watch them together, do you? I'm like, "Yo, let's go ahead." If I fully put, if we're watching that, fully pull my dick out, so I'm resting with it. I was like, "Why? Well, <laughs> that's what you do." And then I don't remember what she did, what what happened, but she 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 found you know. And then now to see how you know, I love my grandma. Did you get she, in trouble. I most I don't, I don't think I got in trouble enough to like get anything taken away, but no one. I'm sure she told everyone, but no one ever said anything to it about me. Or maybe she did. I don't really feel comfortable saying this because it feels inappropriate to say. But also, part of me feels like if you find that your kids have a porno magazine, like just leave them alone. Like my grandma's them- very religious, though. It's the it's a religious part of it. That's what it is. No, I hear you, but also like leave like leave like leave that kid alone like it's it's like you are as horny as you've ever been in your life and you're just trying to find a small amount of relief Mm -hmm. like part of me is like if if if, like let that kid have that magazine but as a kid in that moment i i remember feeling like bitch my life is over but i was she was talking to me i felt the skin on my face like i was like my life my grandmother knows i'm gay and this is when i was like in like this i was like jesus jesus kevin i was like and now god hates me now because he knows i have porn meanwhile if god he would know i had the fucking porn but he gave me the desire not, to want to watch it he made the porn not god found out when your grandma found out not <laughs> not, not grandma and your god were like see i told you <laughs> So I was like, I remember being like, oh my God, like I cannot, it's like, I'm definitely going to hell now. Like it's a wrap on me, which I was like, it's over. Um, I remember something funny. Tell me. Um, (laughs) I I did a a, a video today for my, I have a podcast coming out with Peppermint called Town Hall. Mm -hmm. Um, It was Black Court Town Hall. It's a podcast coming out. It's really exciting. Um, It's not like this one. It's not like a back and forth between two people. It's more of like a community based podcast with stories from a lot of different black queer people. It's really exciting. It's called Town Hall. It's coming out. It's coming out at the end of this month, um, but I was I, I we did an episode about secrets, and my friend Devin um, was on the podcast, and he had a secret about his aunt that he didn't that he didn't tell. He accidentally spit on her head as a kid, and he told her it was raining, and he never came clean about it, and he wanted to tell her about it twenty six years later. Anyway, I did this this interview with this sweet lady named Sandra, and then at the end, Miss Sandra was like told Devin she was like, and if your friend wants any um, outfits, you know my my friend makes dresses for drag queens so now so that is the kind of friend i want the kind of friend i want is the kind of friend like sandra who's like hey you know i have a friend who makes dress oh she was saying this to you well she told it to Devin afterwards she was like i um she was like i and tell you tell your friend if, if if he needs any um any dresses um you know my friend so-and-so can can make some and i'm I don't, anyway I, I just got a picture of some of the dresses they're actually, they're actually really cute all right so you're gonna are you gonna order a dress from miss sandra no, it's not Miss Andrews. Miss Andrews' friend. Oh, so and they, and they are going to order dress Miss They are really cute dresses. They're kind of amazing. It's dresses by uh, I think it's Tandy Alana Beauty. I think that's the one who makes the dresses. I mean, this is a cute. You can't see it, can you? No, I'll I can't see it. Dress. It's a. This yeah. is a. This is honestly a sickening dress. 
it kind of gives a little bit. It kind of gives a little bit of the vibe, like what uh, what's her name used to make? Um, Who? Uh, Lashawn Beyond. Oh, Lashawn Beyond. But Lashawn posted a picture. She is delicious body queen. She's hot. So as as since we're on this topic kind of already, where are you now in the realm of one and a half children? Because we we tell every once every couple of while we, we, we revisit we, we, revisit, we revisit to see if anything's changed. Now I've changed. I was I was a hard no to a maybe to like a leaning toward yes. I want to know where you are now. Today I am a no. Hard no. Hard no. Because because the elf on the shelf. Not elf on the shelf. Just and I, I talk, talk my my dentist was we were talking about her kid and stuff today. And she was saying, you know, and she loves, she's very happy with her family. She was like, having a kid is a lot. Like, it's a lot. And I was thinking, like, it's just all the things, going to recitals and going to the things. And it's just like, it's having a kid feels so daunting to me. It just seems like a lot, a lot, just a lot, think, a lot, Just a lot. ignore the kid and don't go to, like, don't support them. <laughs> and if I had a kid, I'm the type of parent, I, which I'm coming to everything. I'm coming to everything. I'm going to be the obnoxious you don't parent. Co- you don't want to commit to that because you can't go to everything. I had a, I I had know, a mom, I I had a mom who came to very few things. This is no shade to my mom. My mom, my mom was my mom would come to like my plays and stuff. But if mm-hmm. it, but my mom just worked all. My mom worked several jobs, so she just couldn't make it to most stuff. So I was that kid who didn't have my mom at like a lot of stuff I was doing, and my mom was always the last one to pick me up at school. Like it was everyone picked up from like See? after school program, and I'd be the last one sitting there looking crazy. Because my mom had to work late and stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, so having a kid, there's just just a lot that comes to that. And again, I'm only 33 years old. I'm very, I'm I'm, I'm going to start saying 33 because if I, anytime your birthday comes, it takes you like two months to adjust. I'm going to start two months early. It takes me. Um, I'm 33, so I still have time. I think I would any to. I mean, and again, this is times are so different now, bitch. I can be 40 and have a kid and be fine, you know? Because again, I'm not carrying a kid, bitch. We're 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 just donating the sperm. So, but today it would be no. I am, uh, I'm 40, 60. You want to guess which 40 is which 60? I think you're 40, no, 60, yes. Opposite, actually. I'm 40, yes, 60, no. Oh, really? Where, yeah, where are you at, Jacob? I'm probably, I'm probably about the same. Because, I mean, like, for example, let's talk about what just happened now. So me and Jacob are going through this thing where our house is upside down. <laughs> Because our ceiling was leaking, so they they ripped out our whole fucking ceiling. There's there's a big hole in our ceiling in in the mm-hmm. bedroom, like a hole. Like you, like mm-hmm. it, it smells like an attic in there because they everything from the ceiling is gooing into the house. Because all the up. rain, there's so much fucking rain in L.A., bitch. We see we're seeing the problems in houses. It's all this fucking rain. Go ahead. Ours, our, ours was was a burst pipe. Oh, but I'm getting <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah you, you, you was you was Jacob. You, are you about to talk, Jacob? Jacob, what's going on? <laughs> Jacob will unmute and just start tap dancing. Um, <laughs> so, so, so then we have to move our bed into the drag room because we don't. We only have three rooms in this house. One is for podcasting. One is for drag. One is for us to sleep in. So now we're down to the two. So the the bedroom is the drag room right now. Um, and I was like, what if we just throw a kid into all of this, girl? You know what I mean? So if you all see this video, this is the video is Jacob in our bedroom with the bed on its side, uh, arrows on the wall. Can you point the camera at the ceiling or is it attached to the thing? Where they see the holes in the ceiling? You, you kind of can't see them, but they're, there they are. There's oh, yeah. holes in the ceiling. It is madness. And then also a baby. Yeah, I yeah. for me, the answer is no right now. Okay, what is the latest you, you would consider having a baby? Cause I always, when I was when a young guy, I was like, when I have a kid, I do not want to be so much older than my kid. Like I would, like ideally, I would want to be like thirty years older than my kid. P- past that, so like, what is what is the, your ideal age? You're like after this age, you're like I can't consider this anymore. To be honest, I feel too old. That's the truth. I actually feel too old already. Right. Because I'm so much older than my mom was. My mom was 22 or 24 when she had me. Right. I'm 36. I am like 14 years older than my mom was when, or 12 years older. However, I can't remember how old she was. Um, and I and I and I'm not actually doing any math right now. I'm 36. My mom is 60. So you all do the math. 24. Uh, 24. Mom was 24 when she had me. Thank you, money. Um, but also there was this guy. I don't know if I, he's very hot. That's probably inappropriate. But anyway, <laughs> he's. I was. I remember seeing. Him, I was like, you are so beautiful. He's an actor. He's on some show on HBO. I met him at Coleman Domingo's house, 
and um and he uh, but, uh, Griffin Griffin something. He's um he's from the the flight attendant. Yeah, but I was about to get the most vague. He's like, they, they, I, I met this guy. His name is Griffin Matthews. He's like, I met Griffin. this guy. He's a he's a drag queen. He's on RuPaul's Drag Race. I no, he, I knew I knew Jacob would know. I knew Jacob would know. Well, I met Gr- Griffin Matthews, and I was like, man, this guy is so beautiful. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is, Griffin has like has like recently adopted like several children, like I think two or three. Um, what two 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 kids, and he's I think he's about forty years old. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the age I'm capping. After forty, it's, it's going to be a no. But I'm giving my I'm giving myself between now and forty years old oh, to no. decide having a kid. I want to give myself to forty two, but like to forty as well. But that's money. That's that is only four years for me, bitch. You're going to I'm going to blink and I'm going to be forty. <laughs> I know. I'm going to look down and tie my shoe and look up and my back's going to go out. Like it's going to yeah. be that quick. Yeah, I give myself to forty. I mean, and okay, well, okay. Here's another. Here's another question for you. Worst case scenario, right? You and Jacob break up. Whatever. You're not Jacob. Would you have a kid by yourself? No. Really? Never. Not once. No. But I mean, you could afford the help. I said no, Mona. This is not a. I no. <laughs> okay. Would you two raise a kid together? No. I don't show Mona. I would I I would I would leave my child at Bob's because I think Bob would actually be a very good parent. I but co-parenting with Bob so, no would be a nightmare for me. Okay, how about you, me, Bob, and Andy all raise a child together? We share it, all four of us. <laughs> not it, not one sweater. child. Not it, not it. Wait, it's wait, not, why would you? Not, why, not would you not, why would you not raise a child with me? <laughs> because we could not co-parent a child together. Why? We, because I, we just, I just feel like we just foundationally, so many things, we're just different about so many things. I don't think it will work. Like, because I won't, I cause I won't want... let you beat my children? Because I won't <laughs> let you beat my child? You 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 know what? You're scared the child, you're, you're scared that the baby's going to like me more. <laughs> what? Wait, we should all raise a child together. <laughs> well, they're so cute. You're scared Absolutely that the child not. will like me more than the child likes you, and you know it's true. That's why you don't want to do that's it. That's not that's not true for our fans, and it won't be true for our child. First of all, what, what would we name the child? Um, something biblical. Okay, um, you're, you're doing that. You did that. You did that just to upset me. The baby child. The child name should be Ken. the I like baby the, child. I like the name Kenya, and I like the name Genevieve. I like Jade, and I like Dominic. I like I said Kenya and Genevieve. How do you feel I about said, those names? <laughs> I like two, Kenya. One, I don't like Genevieve. Two, what's wrong with Genevieve? I don't know. I like Kenya though. What about Jade and Dominic? Which one do you like? I prefer Jade. But I also Jade prefer Dominic because Dominic is more of an androgynous name. Yeah, and Kenya, Dominic Kenya is, Kenya's an androgynous name too. To be honest, I only know one guy named Kenya and he happens to be the, I don't I don't know him. The big the, producer. Yeah, the blackish guy. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, Kenya's a, a whatever name. But okay, <laughs> Honestly, so we ha- so we have a name. Our child's name was Kenya Dominic. <laughs> Kenya Dominic was the last name, Burton. You can have the last name. I don't. I don't mind. You can, Kenya, child- Kenya Dominic, t- 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 Kenya, Kenya Dominic Burton Tadikyu. That is a long. That is too much. That name can be uh, Burton. I don't. I don't. I don't have. I don't have. I don't need to have my name on things. I'm not like <laughs> my name. <laughs> things. Okay, Jacob's calling it it. You're calling it a thing. You Y'all said are it. You just said it. You said calling it a thing. You said it. You said it too. <laughs> Y'all are unfit to be parents. Monet, let's get a kid. Does anyone ever want to give Monet me and their kid for a year? Here, here. Listen to me, Monet and I. Listen to me. Send your kid to our P.O. box. Jacob, what's our P.O. box? P- mail your kid to our P.O. box. We will raise it for a year. We will rename the baby. It's 59 Al Andalusia Way, P.O. box 49275. Yes, absolutely. Monet, we, we, Mars, we, we, California. We would, our kid would be so loved. It'd be so, they, they, they will be so loved. would be so taken care of. The Oh, the clothes. Every year, the birthday outfits, the Halloween <laughs> garments. Oh my goodness! <laughs> this child will be. Listen, this child. This child will have West Indian roots, Southern roots, <laughs> Jewish roots, and Boston white trash <laughs> and Mayflower roots. <laughs> I'm kidding, Andy. If you're, I don't. I don't think Andy listens to the podcast. He doesn't. Really. He only admits, He only listens when his name is mentioned. So now he's gonna listen. I have you know Jacob listens to literally every episode of the podcast because he has every to every ep- every episode. Honey. Because he has to. Because he loves us, 
Jacob loves to. Jacob hasn't even ca- Jacob hasn't even cashed one of his checks in literally years because he just does this for fun. Okay, then, then give them all back. Then we'll give them back at some point. We're gonna we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna give them to to, uh, to Kenya Dominic Burton. <laughs> KDB. Oh my KDB. god. KDB. <laughs> Can we call the baby Katie? KDB. Oh, we gotta get a baby. We gotta get a baby. <laughs> oh my god. And well, what gonna... sport? What sport is, is your kid playing? Do, would you like them to play? I'm not going to encourage them to play sports, but I, I'm going to put them in dance. I think if they want to play a sport, if, if, if they if, want to, but I'm going to inc- I'm going to let them do. They can do whatever they want, but I, I, if I'm going to offer, them, I'm going to be like, hey, you want to you want to go? You want to? I would like for my I would like for my kid to be able to speak another language. I would like for them for to be able sure. To, I would like them oh, to be able we to have dance. to hire an au pair, and I would like them to be able to dance. Yeah, dance, and they're playing an instrument. You no, it's an, you're playing an instrument. You're playing piano. One thousand okay. percent. You're getting a little pushy. You're getting a little pushy. Not, you not have no to. if ands. Not no if ands or buts. I said I would like. You're like no if ands or buts. What if they're unhappy? What if what if, what if, what, if, what if the baby said? What if what if you what if will Kenya, get over it? What if Kenya is sad? Kenya, you will get over it. But learning to learning to play the piano is a skill that transcends just music ability and talent. Okay, here that I will am. Help I'm you Kenya. With mathematics. I'm Kenya. Daddy, I hate this. I know, baby, but da- just Daddy just, Kevin, I hate this. I know, baby, but we said we we're gonna give it an hour a day, okay? You're only twenty five minutes in. You just have a little more time, okay? I wanna I wanna hear I wanna hear, I wanna hear those for, arpeggios. I've been playing for three months and I I tried it and I really, really don't like it. Please can I please please quit. Okay, well we have we have formal lessons with Miss Smalls. So and for the for the rest of today, what I want you to do is focus on the arpeggios, okay, baby? If you can give me if Ms. you can Malls do at least called me Miss Smalls called me a bitch at our last rehearsal. Okay, well baby, were you being a bitch? I was being I was being bitchy. I was serving cunt. I know that. You were serving kind. Con- what you need to be serving is, is these arpeggios, and the second, and you keep on. You're always flat on the B flat in the second measure. So until you fix that, you're not going anywhere. Let's hear your arpeggios, Father, Ke- Ke- uh, Daddy Kevin. <laughs> Bitch, I just call him Lizzo. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Daddy, that's very impressive. That's very you're welcome. impressive. Because and you, you can- learned it. And I learned it what? You will learn the twerking next week. So okay, first of all, don't ever to. cut me off when I'm talking again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, da- Daddy Caldwell told me I don't have to take anything from anyone, and that includes you. This this is the shit you probably did to Miss Maul. So why she calls you a bitch? Is you, are you cursing at me? I am a child. You're my child. All right, I guess I'm back to the arpeggios. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love but- this idea. A community child with four feet. That sounds insane. I have to buy the house next door to yours, so or you have to buy the condo below mine. Or, to the valley. or you have to buy the condo below mine. I'm into that. And those are the only options. Oh, this is going to be so exciting. Y'all, check out. We'll be dropping our baby soon. We're going to be dropping our brand new baby. <laughs> <laughs> Sibling babery. All right. I love you very much, bro. I love you too, Roberta. Bye.